So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Isaiah 41.10 The God of the Bible is omnipresent. He is present at all times in every space. There is absolutely no place that is void of His presence. The psalm exclaimed that the presence of God is even in the depths of Hades. Those of us who are His children have a greater assurance than just His omnipresence. We are assured of His active or manifested presence. Theologians call this His Shekinah presence. Throughout the Old Testament, we saw Israel experiencing this in supernatural ways. No group of people experienced the glory of God the way the children of Israel did. God went through great supernatural lengths to deliver His people. The waters were turned to blood. Frogs swarmed forth, covering every inch of land and entering houses and bedrooms. Hordes of wild animals destroyed everything in their path. When they came to the banks of the Red Sea, we saw the presence of God parting the waters for them. As they journeyed through the desert on their exodus, we saw His presence manifested as a pillar of cloud by day and pillar of fire by night. God was with the children of Israel. There are many more magnificent manifestations through the scriptures where God was with men and women. The wonderful thing is that even today, God is still with His people. Our Lord Jesus, at the end of the book of Matthew, gave the disciples and us a powerful assurance of the presence of God. As Jesus was ascending, I can just see him tell the disciples and us, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. The promise of the presence of God being with us is trustworthy because no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through Him, the Amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. 2 Corinthians 1.20 This is a blessed assurance. God is so good. He is so faithful. He never leaves you stranded. His timing is perfect. He is never too late. God orders your steps and arranges circumstances all around you to accomplish His plans and purposes. Glory to God. As you pray, and begin to wrestle against the evil forces that are attacking you. The hosts of heaven join with you in combat, in the battles you are fighting right now, in your life, health, family, finances, and in whatever area of life. You are not fighting alone. The hosts of heaven are fighting with you. The Almighty God, Jehovah, is fighting for you. Exodus 14, 14. The Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. If Jesus Christ is your Savior and Lord, then you are the spiritual seed of Abraham, and all the blessings of the Old Testament are for you too. Deuteronomy 1.30 The Lord your God, who is going before you, will fight for you, as He did for you in Egypt, before your very eyes. God sends His angels to protect you and your family from every harm. The angels are fighting for you. Psalm 34, 7, the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. It is a comforting thing to know that we have the presence of God with us. As we go through our daily lives, Jesus promised that he would send the Comforter to be with us always. The Holy Spirit will comfort and guide you and will be your constant companion. When we have feelings of trepidation, we have the guarantee of the comfort of God to know that the Holy Spirit is fighting for you. As you begin to pray, the Spirit Himself goes to meet your supplication and pleads on your behalf with unspeakable yearnings and groanings too deep for utterance. Isaiah 41.10 So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed. Life can get overwhelming and very daunting. Fear is a crippling emotion. 
It pulls our focus from God and puts it on the situations we are facing. God wants us to be comforted when everything seems to be working against us and the tasks seem impossible. He gives us this comfort by assuring us of His presence. When we become overly concerned and stressed about the unexpected, He also comes alongside us to comfort us. We must trust that the God who has promised His presence is knowledgeable of what is coming next and has already made the way favorable for us. God is not just present with us here. He is present with us through eternity. Be comforted by the promise of His presence. Look at these passages in Joshua. We have another dimension to the presence of God. He isn't passively standing there watching what is happening to us. He is involved. He told Joshua that no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. Our battle is not against flesh and blood but against principalities, powers, and the rulers of wickedness. We are promised by God that they will not be able to stand against us. What wonderful assurance! When we feel separated from His presence, we should go back to Paul's assurance. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Absolutely nothing can come between us and God's presence. Nothing can come between us and God's immeasurable love. In addition to God's commitment to Joshua, I want to bring focus to the commitment found in Isaiah. I will strengthen you and help you I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. This doesn't suggest in the least a passive presence. He is there to participate and not to observe. God doesn't stand on the sidelines and just watch you in the battle. No, He gets in there with you and gives you the strength you need to win. He gives you the strength you need to overcome. When we get weak, His strength makes us strong. When we feel helpless, He is our very present help. If we ever begin to fall, His righteous hand of power holds us up. He has committed His presence to comfort us. He has committed His presence to go into combat for us. He has committed His presence to counter our weaknesses and helplessness. God is not a man that He would lie to us. His promises are concrete and sure. Let us walk in faith knowing that He is always with us. Never will He leave us. Never will He forsake us. Our God wants us to know that we are His. Men in the Bible experience the sense of God's absence. Joshua, the first to hear the promise, I will never leave nor forsake you wandered where God was after he rounded Jericho. Enemies, here. Defeat, present. The psalmist wrestled with God's absence. Psalm 13, 1. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? Job had moments of wondering, where is God? Job 23, verse 1 through 5. Even today, my complaint is bitter. God's hand is heavy in spite of my groaning. If I only knew where to find him, if only I could go to his dwelling, I would state my case before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I would find out what he would answer me. If only I knew where to find him. Even Jesus asked the question from the cross in Matthew 27, 46. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? People who wrote the Bible struggled at times with the absence of God. And so have saints through the ages. This is a common experience in the Christian life. 
So if you've been there or are there right now, don't feel like the Lone Ranger. We are in good company. And you, like most of us who have experienced God's absence, would probably say, my mind and my faith tell me God is with me in some way. But I sure don't feel him near me now. He will not forget about us, and he will not leave us behind. He will never give up on us, for he loves us, and we are his. He has many children, but he loves each of us, and will never forget about any of us. It is his delight to care for us and hear our prayers. My friend, settle it in your heart once and for all. God will never leave you. He will never forsake you.